Right, this time we're going to learn how we can uh, think in Sparkle, as you can say. Uh, you know, uh, when, when you learn Java, you may have a you may have come across a, a, a book called Thinking in Java. I remember the, uh, if I remember the author name was Bruce something, Bruce Eckel or something. Anyway, and the book was actually uh, translated into many different languages. It's a very nice book. I really recommend everyone to you use it if you want to learn Java. But we need to apply the same concept here and learn to think in Sparkle. Why am I saying this? Let's have an example and explain why I'm, I'm actually saying this. Now, in this example, in this data sets, the author has uh, what looks like you know an address book here. So we have two prefixes. You know, remember the, the uh, uh, period at the end. Uh, and of course, it's a turtle format, of course, and you know that's a comment. Anyway, and we have here some entries for individuals. Yes. So for, uh, this individual here has has what, what it lo looks like an ID. Uh, for, uh, for property first name value is Richard so uh, subject predicate object you know uh, resource uh, sort of resource identifier and then property name and then property value yes I'm sure everyone remembers this now anyway so Richard you know has first name Richard this individual has first name Richard last name Mutt uh, home telephone number this telephone number and email da 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 and then the second one is Cindy Marshall phone number email and the third one is Craig Ellis and it doesn't have a phone number but he has two emails now if we try to run a simple query on this and try to for example to get back the individual who has you know a certain f a certain telephone number let's say we want to get back this individual here yeah so uh, the individual who has this phone number what we do is we run simple query with our prefix and then select person so we, we want that person who where remember this condition now inside our curly brackets who has a home telephone number of this value so variable name person with a semicolon and by the way the variable names we use here in the select they will be displayed in the output uh, in, in the result set yes and that w in, in what looks like a tabular result this will this will be a, a, a column name so we're so what we're saying is select person where person with a, with a, with the question mark of course he has a home telephone number with our prefix this value here if we run that um, so remember it's uh, this is the query file and this is the data file yes turtle format we run that what happens is what we get is this this uh, result here it's, it's only one entry but it's giving us actually a URI to that individual his ID here if you notice but we are not interested in that because that's that's useful maybe for a machine, but not, but for human human beings, for, for people to read, that is not very useful. So what we, what we want to do is we want to get maybe for someone who has that phone number, maybe we want to get his email back, or maybe his first name and his last name. This is where we start to think in Sparkle and use uh, uh, the facilities that Sparkle gives us to actually link these things together so we can get the first name and the last name. And the way to do that, if you see. This is the original query, and uh, the, the author of the book is or has changed it to this query here, which is again quite simple. What, what he's saying is, select first name and last name, so this will be our column names. Now, and notice the question mark again in front of the variable names, where this person, or we have a person, yeah, variable name called person, he has a home telephone number of this value so this part of the query what it'll do is it'll find us it will find us anyone who has this phone number yeah and hold his ID or his details in this per, uh, uh, variable called person notice I'm not actually using person here I'm only using it inside uh, the where clause yes and then what happens next is I say or he's saying for this person yes he needs to have a property first name get that property and save it in variable first and this person the same person he has a property called last name save it or put it or place it in variable last yes I hope that makes sense yes what happens is now that we the query what will happen when it's executed it will actually find that phone number uh, if you remember here it actually placed this 
output in person and we displayed it there this will be the same thing now that output will be placed here but we're going to use it and say no now give me the first name it has a property called first name place it in first and property last name and put it here and then display the two values as we see there enough talking let's see what happens when we actually execute that so the query here is actually 017 rather than 008 017 we run that and we get column name first and last and we get the first name and the last name if I want to get for example the email value I say first name last name and for example email and then I can say for the same person now get me uh, he has email and then get me the email and then if I just save that and execute it I'll just get three columns rather than two I hope that makes sense now um, one more thing that he is actually mentioning that I'd like to mention as well is that always remember even for uh, those of us who design ontologies or who deal with RDF schemas yeah you know that uh, 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 our ontologies or RDF schemas they usually define you know relationships and terms yes yeah? so they usually have metadata sort of yes but essentially they are collections of triples they are collections of triples so we can actually run sparkle queries against them yes I hope that makes sense that they uh, uh, our ontologies or RDF schemas they describe you know properties and, and relationships and stuff like that but at the end of the day they are collections of triples so we can actually run uh, uh, sparkle queries against them the other thing that I wanted to mention here to, to mention here is that um, for turtle files for the turtle format and uh, I believe even for the n3 format for the R RDF files for the I for the RDF model we can actually have shortcuts so what uh, uh, instead of repeating variable person here what we can do is we can actually use a semicolon there and then just remove this another semicolon remove this and place a semicolon remove this and then end it with uh, so this should be actually placed here end it with our usual beautiful period yeah so this is a shortcut and if you just save it and execute it again we'll get the same exact results because uh, arc understands that this is a shortcut instead of having the full uh, statements together I'm telling it or we are telling it that these are actually sort of one statement the dot ends it but the semicolon tells it that the coming part or the coming line is also part of it yes so this and this are exactly the same thing I hope you like this I hope you are enjoying it so far run it again oh I'm sorry something's not right here and yes I've forgotten the semicolon yes and then we'll just run it again and it's running again I hope you're enjoying this I hope you are enjoying this what I wanted to do now was I want you to open this turtle file here yes run Jena Forsaker's server upload it and copy and paste this query and run it there on the Forsaker server thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time